my name is Jerry Gill, and today is February 5th, 2010. I'm visiting with Sarah Jane Rogers in her home here in Holdenville, Oklahoma. This interview is for the O-State Storage Project of the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program. And uh, Sarah Jane, I appreciate it very much you allowing us to come in your home and visit with you today. We're glad to have you. Yeah. Now, I know you're, you're a member of the Berry family that has been historically significant to Oklahoma State University, to Stillwater, and, and to the state of Oklahoma. And your father, James E. Berry, was a five-term lieutenant governor of the state of Oklahoma. But, but first, I want to be, you know, and I want to visit with you about the Berry family. But first, let's find out more about you, okay? All right. Can you tell me a bit about, uh, see, where you, see, you were the youngest of seven children, is that right? Yes. And you were born? Uh, in Stillwater. In Stillwater, Oklahoma, and, and grew up there in Stillwater. Okay. Do you remember the home that you grew up with? Was it on Duck Street? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit Duck. about it? It was uh, built, I think, by Dr. Wittenberg, or he was connected with it some way. Mm -hmm. And it had been a, a fraternity house and a sorority house bef before we bought it. Mm -hmm. And when they, when Dad bought it, he had to add on a bedroom, mm -hmm. even though it mm -hmm. had been used as a fraternity house. Mm -hmm. And I, they bought it year before I was born. Mm -hmm. did, did, you, did you live up on the second floor? My, my bedroom was up mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Okay. What were some of your uh, your favorite memories of Stillwater as a child growing up? Oh, the median out in front, cars going by, mm -hmm. I think we always had that grass median mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. And you could walk, a friend and I used to walk over to the courthouse and roller skate on the all their sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It was a great place to grow up. Mm -hmm. I could walk to Jefferson School. Mm -hmm. Now, where, where was Jefferson School located? Where are these? Uh, uh, Main Street. Chamber of Commerce is there. Okay, mm -hmm. they're on, on Main Street. The building was this. Is this the school board building now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What were some of your family activities at that time? Oh, we'd go out to Yost, Yost Lake occasion, mm -hmm. occasionally. Mm -hmm and swim out there. Um, and the kids went down to Crystal Plunge mm -hmm. and we swam there nearly every day. That was the old swimming pool off of uh, East 6th Street. Is that where it was? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it not there? No. No. Oh. In fact, um, Bill and Bob went down there one time and they had just been to the city and bought bathing suits and they were just trunks and the people at the swimming pool told them they'd have to go home and get something else on. <laughs> they couldn't swim with just bathing trunks. <laughs> what, uh, you remember, so you went to Stillwater High School, can you tell me some of your activities at high school? Oh, I was busy in high school. I was a drum major of the Drum and Beagle Corps and active in all the mm -hmm. clubs mm -hmm. in, the, in the school. Glenn Farnham was our band director, mm -hmm. and I really did like him. Mm -hmm. He still got family mm -hmm. in Stillwater. Did, what musical instrument did you play? A bugle. Bugle, a drum and bugle chord, that, should, mm -hmm. that makes sense. And then oh. he'd, he'd <clears throat> call me into the band sometimes when they were marching and I played the cymbals. I was good at that too. Mm -hmm. Sarah Jane, what were some of the uh, family values that you were taught that, that you learned as a child growing up that stayed with you later in your life? Always to, to be honest mm -hmm. and uh, don't talk about your business. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'd ask Dad some question about personal things. Mm -hmm. Anybody don't if anybody asks you, tell them you don't know. And that was his answer to most things. Okay. And work hard when he'd give me a, give me a chore to do. I had to stay right with it till I finished. And then when I was in high school, I spent a lot of time in the summer typing for him down at the office. That was my campaign. Did you have the old carbon copies then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I had a form, pretty much a form letter. Mm -hmm. A 
and I could whip that out <laughs> in a hurry. So you uh, then you attended Oklahoma State University after you graduated from high school. I went to Sullins for one year. To where? Sullins, Bristol, Virginia. Oh, okay. And then. Is there, is there a story there, of Sarah Jane, why you went to all the way to Virginia for a year of school? No, my sister went toward Belmont and Tennessee. And I don't think it was there mm -hmm. anymore. And we latched on to Sullins. And it was an interesting year. Mm -hmm. But I came back to OSU, a and m And what, what brought you back? Oh, I just, I wanted to go to a and m <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about your, your student experience at Oklahoma State. What, first of all, what, what was your major? In, uh, English. Mm -hmm. In fact, they gave me a sweatshirt for Christmas. I'm an English major. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Uh, Beverly has to take care of my math. When mm -hmm. I, I came back in 45, September, mm -hmm. and that was the war was just over and the boys were beginning to come back. And that school grew from 3,000 to about 15,000 mm -hmm. in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Had all the Quonset huts out there. Had classes in Quonset huts. But you knew just about everybody on campus. It was wonderful. Where, where did you live? Did you live on campus? No, I lived at home. At home. Mm -hmm. A couple of years I got to stay in the Theta house which was fun. The Theta House. Mm -hmm. And I found out now that Boone Pickens was our dishwasher. <laughs> but I didn't know it. <laughs> oh. Well, could you, uh, Sir Jane, could you talk about some of the organizations you're part of, some of your student activities you're engaged in? Oh, the... Uh, can't remember. I was in the Terps of Korean which was connected with the dance and um, orange and black quail and then made mortarboard mm -hmm. which was very exciting mm -hmm. but all the athletics i twirled with the band oh geez. Was it like halftime football games you were a twirler we weren't as good as the ones now oh. but it was fun and enjoyed it Enjoyed that. Who, who's your marching band director then? Hiram Henry. Hiram Henry, okay. Yeah. And Jimmy Baker was the drum major. Jimmy oh. Baker. I'll be doing yeah. Baker, remember him? Yeah. Well, some, did you have some favorite faculty members that, you know, as you look back on them, were special to you, maybe mentors to you, you recall? No. Yeah. Dr. Walker taught humanities. He was he was a favorite. What were some favorite student hangouts at that time? You know, where, where, you know, on campus and off campus, do you remember? I'm trying to think what's the name of the one over across street from the Chi Mega House. Aggie Barbecue? No this That's down in Washington. Mm. No, this is I wouldn't swim swim on knob block. Swims on knob block. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was called, but that was one of the, a good hangout. Was the was the White Hut still there then? By just north of Student Union, or what's Student Union today? I guess wasn't there when you were there, but mm. no. Okay. Right. Did you ever have any activities around Theta Pond? <laughs> well, no, nothing like that. Nothing like nothing, nothing that exciting. Huh? No. Okay. Well, I gotta ask you this question because we're, we're going to talk about your dad later. But I want to interject here that, because your father was uh, lieutenant governor when you were going to Oklahoma State University, the state of Oklahoma, uh, how did that affect your relationship with other students? I mean, was that was being lieutenant governor's you know no. daughter a good thing or a bad thing socially? Didn't make a bit of difference. Okay. Dad, dad never would let us make anything out of it, mm -hmm. and you know it just wasn't wasn't brought up, mm -hmm. but. Did, did many of your friends know, uh, oh, know knew about that? Yeah, mm -hmm. just had a high school reunion the last couple of years. One of the questions they asked on a little skit, who was, who was Lieutenant Governor when we started school and was still Lieutenant Governor when we graduated? <laughs> did you get that answer to that one, Craig? 
I got that. <laughs> Most of them did. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the uh, when Dr. Bennett brought in all the Quonset huts and from you know, World War II and the units to help house in the growth. Are there other uh, uh, things you remember about the campus that you look back on now and recall during your three years there? No, it wasn't near as big mm -hmm. as it is now. Mm -hmm. And we all we all walked. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. uh, crowd, they didn't have mm -hmm. congestion. Mm -hmm. We had uh, no student union, mm -hmm. I think. But it was, it was a good campus. Mm -hmm. Well, just maybe ask sort of a different way. As you look back on your time at Oklahoma State University, are there any special memories that you have about Oklahoma State? can't think of any. Except it was a good, good college. All, all of them are special, right? Why don't, if we could take a break just a minute, and, and, and I'd like to visit a little bit about you, about the Berry family, about your family specifically, uh, particularly you know your father because of his uh, impact he had on, on the state. Uh, growing up and throughout your life, were you aware of, of the, uh, the extended Berry family history and traditions and the, the, the professional stature of many of the members of the Berry family? Was that, did you know about that? Was that special to you? No, it was just, mm -hmm. just, it just was. Mm -hmm. Just family. Did, uh, did any of your, you know, your brothers, uh, uh, brothers, and your your father's brothers and sisters, did, did they ever have family reunions or get-togethers? Yes, we had. Mm -hmm. Had a couple of family reunions, mm -hmm. not as often as we should have. Mm -hmm. We went up to Pawnee one time to Uncle George's house, mm -hmm. and then out to Melinda's grandparents, mm -hmm. South Town. Uh, Thomas Thomas Ian Berry's home. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Was it uh, Sarah Jane? Jenny was the oldest daughter, uh, yes. then your aunt, and you were named after after yes. her, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Then there was uh, Thomas Ann, Dora Alice, James, Sophia, which is Bessie, I guess, is that right? No, missed that one, okay. Uh, no, there were just four. Mm, just four, okay. In, in his family. Did, did, you, did you know some of those uh, personally, did, you know, the aunts and yes. uncles? And um, any special memories you have of the family? Aunt Dora and uh, Aunt Jenny were. Or we visited them often. Mm -hmm. And uh, Aunt Jenny lived in a two-story brick house in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And we used to go up there to see her. Mm -hmm. She had a, a music box with a dog's head. He pick up his and then play. Mm -hmm. I love that music box. Really, uh any family traditions or stories that you remember telling as they'd get together for special events, you know, maybe Christmas time or reunions, uh, stories that talk about the family that you could share? We always had Christmas dinner at, mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. Everybody everybody came back. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my brother Bill was a decorator, mm -hmm. and he would bring a carload of hats and we'd all, Virginia and Monica and Joyce and I would try on hats. <laughs> and he decide which one we wanted. <laughs> it was crazy. He would decide. Did, that did. Was, and the little kids would go walk down to the picture show while we visited. Did, did you know your, your grandfather, Thomas E. Berry, was he? Uh, still alive when you were no, my, a child. My grandfather was William. Was William okay? Thomas. Oh, her grandfather was William Edward Berry. Yeah. Okay. Thomas right. Nelson would have been her uncle. Okay. I get him. Sorry if I get him mixed up here on the occasion. I've been. That's all right. I do too. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember anything about your your grandfather? No, he died when I was two years old. Oh, okay. I remember grandmother, grandma. Mm -hmm. She. Lived a few years longer, mm -hmm. but I don't remember much about her. Was it uh, special to you that your your the home is still there on Duck Street? Oh yes. And then, like I said, it's been uh, changed hands a few times since, but it's still been well maintained and so far. Mm -hmm. You ever drive by, still take a look at it, and oh, have sure. some memories come back to you? Um, 
you know, George, such a good-hearted fellow. He uh, told us he'd rented the house to a couple of real nice fellas. So we said, well, that's, that's good. And will they take care of it? Oh, yes, take good care of it. And about that time, one of the granddaughters came, came to her mother and said, so-and-so just called. They're having a big party at the Berry House. <laughs> Everybody's invited. Oh. So we had to get, get them out. Well, uh, maybe a different way of asking this question, uh, Sarah Jane, but, but how important is the Berry family legacy to you? I mean, how has it influenced oh, you? It's very important. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of Mom and Dad. They were just really super people, mm -hmm. and I wanted my kids to know to know more about them. Mm -hmm. you, can we talk a little bit maybe about, about the other side of the family? Your mother uh, was was Edwina Morrison was her maiden name. Yes. Okay. Well, can you tell a little about her family background? She grew up in Taylor Taylor Effingham Taylorville. Excuse me. I had two towns there. Taylorville, Illinois. Her father was a merchant, and her grandfather had a two-story brick home out on the edge of town. And the bricks were made there on the farm. And he had had to be a bee house. The bee house had, let's say, a twelve openings, and they were all painted a different color, and the bees knew which which was their color. Hmm. I never quite believed it, but they said it was true. And then in 1898, they moved, moved to Stillwater, and the mother and father came down first and got a house and set things up. And then Edwina, who was 10 years old, came down and brought her little sister Virginia with her. They were on a train for three days by themselves. And this, but they made it. And then grandfather started a, the Morrison's dry goods store there in Stillwater, which is up around Hinkle's bread shop, which around the, the uh, well, just north of the drugstore at 6th and, and Main. Seventh, and she, Mama worked in the store every, every Saturday, and she had to, she ran a cash register, and she had to balance out at the end of the day. She was always good in math. She, in fact, she majored she majored in math at college, and then grandfather died before he was forty. And grandmother kept kept the store open for a while. But I don't know how long. So your so then your mother, she went to Oklahoma State University or Oklahoma A M at that time. She she graduated in 1907. Seven. 1907. Their class class yell was wisdom, wit, sand and grit. 1907. We are it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Great. Did, did she ever talk about some of her uh, her experiences as a student? No, you she, remember? Um, I'm sure she did, but I don't remember. Oh, they were married. Um, she and Dad were married in 1908. Hmm. Yes, and her mother was very socially conscious. Hmm. I mean, we. They sent an engraved invitations for the wedding, engraved announcements that they ordered from St. Louis. But they had a, a, a social group, I don't know what it was called, but they had a, had a dance and sent out invitations to the fellas and it said at home. And that meant there was going to be, be dancing. 
And then Dad had a, a party before they married, and they all went to Guthrie on the train and went to a play or opera, maybe an opera. And they stayed a couple of days, but Mrs. Morrison went along to chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it didn't get out of hand. Oh, yeah. And then statehood, she and Dad went down on the train for the the dance, the inaugural ball. And you got through there. Mm -hmm. Well, let me back up just a minute and ask you, do you your, now your father went one year to Oklahoma A&M? Yes. Mm -hmm. did, did, did you ever say anything about his, his year there experience? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't talk about his childhood too much or his young years. Now he he went on to was it a business college after business that? college, Quincy, mm -hmm. Illinois. I think it was Jim Jim. Get that notebook right there on the mm -hmm. counter, please. A black notebook. Sir Jane, back to your your mother. I I understand that she had a keen sense of humor was an engaging conversationalist, and for a woman of her time, she was well-educated and was a progressive thinker. Yes, she was. Uh, what, 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 what else did we know about your mom? No. Um, she went back to A&M in 1928, 29, and took speech lessons because she knew she was going to have to make, make speeches. Mm -hmm. So she got that. And at the same time, <coughs> she was made an honorary member of Theta. She was in college and that made it legal some way. Mm -hmm. But she was very, a uh, very uh, good alum for Thetas. Did a lot of things. Went to a lot of meetings. Went to reunions and served in their, in their board director. Yeah. Then. Oh yeah. She was chairman of the board mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. You, what, what was, uh, what was she like as a mother in your... Oh, she, she was a wonderful mother. She, she was, uh, had had a lot of heartache, but she never talked about it. She lost uh, James Ed when he was six, 16 over in England at a Boy Scout World Jamboree fell off a cliff, and then Bobby, when he was, was in the war, but she never, you know, she grieved, but not in, not around us. And uh, you know, Robert was, was, you were next to, he was the last boy and you are the last, so y'all were how, how far between in age were you? Four two? years. Okay, so he then, he was killed in World War II, is that correct? What, what, what theater was he in? He was over in, in uh, Germany. Germany. Mm -hmm. 1944. Mm -hmm. No, 45. 45. Just before the war ended. Oh, gosh, how tragic. Yeah, we already knew the war was over in Europe, and mm -hmm. we were excited because he was safe. And then mm -hmm. I was still at Sullins mm -hmm. when I got the, got the word. Mm -hmm. And it, all four boys were in the war. Bill was Navy, George was infantry, long to the Air Corps. France was, Frank was infantry, and Bobby was in the 42nd Division, which Dad served in in the first war. Hmm. What, uh, talking about your, your mother again, you reported that she was, a, was an ideal politician's wife. In what ways was, was she helpful to your dad in his political campaigns? Well, she kept him on, kept him focused, mm -hmm. and uh, she knew every town they'd go to, she had, had friends, mm -hmm. or somebody that she had, and she could talk to anybody, <laughs> talk to the farmers about their crops and merchants, and then teachers. You know, she was just really a, a very educated person. And a real lady. What was the story she used to tell about she should have been a horticulture major? Can you tell that story? Oh, yes. Somebody asked her what she majored in at college, 
and she said math. But if I'd known I was going to raise berries, I would have gone into horticulture. <laughs> but you know, speaking of math, now math was very, I'm thinking 1908 or 7 yeah. when you graduated. Was it very unusual for a woman to be a math major then? I th sure was. She was a pretty progressive gal then, wasn't she? She was, she was smart. She, she could do that math. <laughs> you had the t-shirt, you know, I'm, what is it, I'm an English major, you, you do the math. So. That's right. So your mom did the math. <laughs> well, did, did she share your, your father's love of politics? Uh, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And she, she was instinctive mm -hmm. about it. But she, uh, she sat on the floor of the Senate while he presided. At that time, they let the lieutenant governor use the gavel. Mm -hmm. And his first term, he got mixed up with the pro with their rules and procedure and had to back out. But by the next session, he knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. And she would sit down on the floor and do her needlepoint. We have so much of it here at the house. that um, She kept her busy, and the senators would come by and speak to her, visit with her. And one senator came by one day and said, Ms. Berry, is there anything I can do for you? She said, yes. I want you to add Oklahoma to the state flag. He said, we go to meetings out of state, and they have all the flags flying, and nobody can tell which one is Oklahoma. He said, I'll take care of it. And I did have a letter from him telling about that, but the letter got lost. And I don't remember what senator it was. But every time I see Oklahoma on the flag, I think, thank you, Mama. You were old enough to remember some of the campaigns. Do you remember what your mother did during the campaigns, what role she played? Yes. Um, I think it was the 38 campaign. She had four, four kids at home. And she'd get up every morning and get um, things started. And then she'd get dressed drive to the bank, pick up the mail, and drive to Oklahoma City, 70 miles, at, what, 35 miles an hour? Ooh. And then she'd run the, run the state headquarters, be sure everything was going good, and then she'd get back home and fix dinner. <laughs> wow, if what that's a not special a, lady. And then in, in the meantime, <laughs> you know, she, she spoke when they were out on tours. If Dad couldn't go to Claremore, she'd go and speak for him. Oh, she'd speak in his behalf, she'd speak in front of the, the, oh, the whole yeah. group. Mm -hmm. Was she a pretty good orator? Did you ever, yes. did you ever hear her speak? Oh, um, no, but I've got a, a lot of her notes. <coughs> and she had, she had made some good speeches. Was, was, that, was that unusual for women at that time for for the spouse action, you know, make campaign speeches? I think it probably was. Mm -hmm. oh, it's amazing. Mrs. Now, the Marlin, Marlins were the first governor he served under, and she and Mrs. Marlin were very friendly. Mm -hmm. We've got, I've got several notes Ms. Marlin wrote to her. Mm -hmm. And when they came up to Stillwater for a football game, she'd have a, um, that open the house and let them come and bring all their out of town people and have still water people too. Mm -hmm. but she was uh, a, a, a lovely social hostess. Did she host a lot of activities? Oh, yes. uh, not just campaign, but just sort of uh, uh, clubs, and clubs and activities known. What, what were some of the organizations that she was active in in Stillwater? The Women's Club, wasn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and she played bridge. But she was a pretty a good bridge player, wasn't she? A-A-U-W. <laughs> well, they both, they both played bridge. They finally had to split them. They had two, four couples that played, and they finally had to split up the men and the women. <laughs> Keep the squabbling down. <laughs> they, they played with the same ones for years and years. Now your your mother's understand was fairly fashionable in what she wore, and she had this thing for hats. I understand. Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, she was. Um, 
just a, a good dresser. Every afternoon she'd, I guess, take a nap and then get up and put on her little linen dress and shoes that match. And, you know, go sit on the front porch and needlepoint. But when she went to banquets or dinners, she always had a good looking outfit and a small hat that matched. What with that outfit? She had different. She had different hats, oh, yeah. different outfits, and different occasions. That's right. And they all matched. What do you, you know, thinking back? What do you remember most about your mother? Her kindness. Her smile. And how much fun we had together. <coughs> Dad didn't eat dinner at night, so she and I would go up to. Chili Bowl, which was there at that time, mm -hmm. or to out someplace for a dinner. Mm -hmm. And she always let me use her car. I used it a lot. <laughs> I, later I wondered how she ever got anything done. Mom, can I use the car? Sure. <laughs> now, let me, I gotta ask you, your father did not eat dinner. Just, I mean, is this? He was just always on a diet, and he'd eat. Um, when he got home from the bank at 3 or 4 o'clock, he'd eat a big dinner, and then try to try not to eat again. So you kind of have either what you call it an early dinner or late lunch, kind of about 2 or 3 o'clock? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of your dad, you can kind of shift gears a little bit, and I want to ask some questions about, it, about your dad. Uh, and said, how, how old was he when you were born? She was 39, 45 probably. Mm -hmm. okay. You do the math, 81 from 27. Mm -hmm. You were talking about, about your mother. What do you, what do you remember about, uh, about your, your father? What, 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 what kind of, you know, the, the non, you know, the private person, the, the family man, what kind of, what kind of father was he? Distant. He wasn't just, you know, He'd come home from the bank, go in the den and sit in his chair and read all the newspapers and news magazines. But um, he, he didn't want us to bother him too much. So he was friendly, you know, but he just, he wasn't the type to sit down and, and visit with us too much. He and Mama played Jen Rummy all, all the time. And kids played with him. Play cards. Play cards. Mm -hmm. And we went on went on some trips together. Drove down to Florida one time. And he he didn't gamble at the races or anything, but you drive along, he bet you that turtle's gonna get across the road. <laughs> or not get across the road. <laughs> and he always wanted to go someplace. But as soon as she started, he was ready to go. Mm. Sir Jane, what, uh, what values did you learn from your father? The value of money. And how to keep it. What kind of a what kind of personality did, did your dad have? What, what were his character traits that you remember? Oh, he he could be funny at times, a sense of humor, I guess. But he was he was just gruff. Mm -hmm. You know, we just didn't have didn't have time to make a lot of small talk. Mm -hmm. Did he have a, did he have a good sense of humor? You say. It, it was obvious mm -hmm. occasionally, not not every day. Mm -hmm. And I worked with him down at the bank. Mm -hmm. and without pay. Mm -hmm. Right. So he was, but he was probably a hard working person then if you describe him. Very very disciplined, organized. Yes. He greeted everybody when they came in the bank. Mm -hmm. I can remember. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of your, your banking experience with your, with your dad, of course, Stillwater International Bank's been part of the Berry family for, what, three or four generations now, but uh, 
is an important part of your family. Your father became president of the bank in 1929, inherited from or inherited, but took over from his from his father. Yes. And that's a pretty tough time to take over a bank, wasn't it? Yes, 1929. It was. uh, w. E. Barry moved to Stillwater and was a, a charter member of the Oklahoma State Bank. I think it was, and then that merged into the Stillwater National, mm -hmm. and he became president. And he served until he died in 29. And Dad served till he died, 66. Mm -hmm. Was this right? I'm thinking. Was this right before the banks, you know, uh, shut down? They had the, the the banking holiday that FDR had later. So I guess this was a pretty tumultuous time oh, in bank yes. history. But it stayed open. Mm -hmm. They didn't shut it down. Mm -hmm. you, uh, can you kind of share some of your memories then when you worked or what, what would you do? You said secretarial work yeah. for him? Mm -hmm. And then handed out statements, you know, just... Mm -hmm. Some errand girl kind of doing things. Yeah. Um, but I did a lot of typing mm -hmm. for the campaigns. Mm -hmm. You want to tell about how Papa Barry gave out loans? Oh, at the, at the, the capital, they ran out of money one time, and they all had warrants, but they couldn't cash them. And they all, you know, they secretaries needed needed money to live on. Mm -hmm. So he he walked up and down the halls, and would take their take their warrants, mm -hmm. cash them, mm -hmm. and. Uh, charge them one or two percent, something, mm -hmm. until they could got paid and could pay them back. Is he got to be a pretty popular guy then, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He well, said he, the story about uh, uh, Dave Sylvester or somebody coming in. Oh, that. Uh, did you know? You knew Dave, Dave, David Sylvester. Yes. Um, he came over from Arkansas, landed at the bus station. And the bank was across the street, so he walked over there, and Dad went out and said, "Do you know who the lieutenant governor is?" And David said, "No, and I don't give a darn." <laughs> <laughs> I guess. The, Did they, he then introduce himself? <laughs> they <laughs> wanted to borrow some money uh, to, to go to school. And that was what Dad always asked. Do you know who the lieutenant governor is? <laughs> they laughed about that. <laughs> So it wasn't long before those students were going to be voters, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now he had, Melinda had indicated earlier that he uh, he greeted, was known for greeting everybody. Was he, he was the sort of the front person for the bank? Yeah, he'd stand out there and visit with all his all his friends, mm -hmm. meet meet new friends. Mm -hmm. Now, were, were there other members of the family involved in the bank at that time? Oh, well, George. Was there, and then Frank was president after the, after Dad, mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, so it was. And after Frank died, mm -hmm. they had to go outside the family. You're sort of changing the little direction of your dad. He was uh, he had a, a military background. I understand that he. Did he help organize the local National Guard unit? Yes, he did. Order? I had a sheet of paper with all that on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure where it went. He organized Company I of the National Guard in 1913. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, did he actually, before that, he actually served in was the Spanish-American War, did he? No, this was afterwards. Thank you. And I don't know why he was such a not on the military when it had no, you know, no ROTC and mm -hmm. like that. Not in December 1913, he organized the company I, and then that's not he was captain, first Oklahoma infantry, and they served on the. Mexican border uh, with 1st Oklahoma Infantry, 1916. 
and then they came back for a few months and then were called back into service to go to Europe. So he went over there with the 42nd Division. Do you, do you remember anything about his uh, service in, in World War One? Where he served, sure what campaigns you were in or anything? Um, no, I don't remember. But um, he went over on a troop ship, and one night they had a scare about a submarine that he told about in one of his letters. It was interesting. And then after he came back from Europe, he organized the National Guard again in 1923, Division Headquarters Company, and was made, he was had, was a major. But he always he took his guard company to down to Fort Sill every summer for whatever they do, and he just really really enjoyed that military. And he had Frank and George both, they both went to OMA. Mm -hmm. And Frank was an ROTC at OSU. Yeah, OMA is Oklahoma Military Academy in Claremore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a two, two year school at the time, wasn't it? Or what I was, a couple years of high school, prep school, and then two years of college. Yes. Okay. I think they just went to high, high school because he came back and went to OU one year mm -hmm. and quickly saw. The, Light and came back to Stillwater and hated OU. <laughs> well, uh, you kind of bring the question, but there's we really know there's not a, a connection somewhere with his interest in the military, in the family, or anything. I don't know where it mm -hmm. came from. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's one of those things I didn't think about mm -hmm. at the time. But now I wonder, and there's nobody to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he, they have. His company, that if you said a, said a cuss word, you had to put a quarter in the, in the pot. Mm -hmm. And evidently they were pretty bad because they had a lot of money in the pot <laughs> and he gave it to the cook. To the, and they had the best, best food in camp. Mm -hmm. Everybody would come over and want to eat with them. But the, the cook was a man from Stillwater, had a little dive down a room, uh, just a small, mm -hmm. and off Main Street, 13th or so. Well, he'd go down there and eat with him real often and kept his friends from the, from the military. Mm -hmm. And he'd retired then as a major, I think, right? Yes. Well, oh, kind of, that well, was, excuse me. Uh, Phillips made him retire. He was uh, lieutenant governor, and they called the, the uh, National Guard to serve again. And Dad was all set to go. You know, he was he was going to go with him. <laughs> and Red Phillips said, "Make up your mind. You're either a soldier, or you're a lieutenant governor. You you can't do both." And Dad had to. He was a little old to be gone anyway, so he had to resign this, his commission. Probably a tough decision for him. Oh, though, it was. <laughs> I got a cartoon of him sitting, sitting on the Capitol steps in his uniform wondering uh, what to do. Well, you know, speaking of your father, to come back and ask some questions about his political you know, career, uh, he served five terms as lieutenant governor, the, the, the most in, in, in history of the state from 1935 to 1955, so 20 years. Uh, that, that's unprecedented in Oklahoma history. How was he able to get elected five times, and what, what was his appeal to voters? Well, mostly he just, you know, would keep in contact with them. Mm -hmm. Made lots of colonels mm -hmm. on the governor's staff, and uh, you wonder why, why he worked so hard for a job that paid $1,000. And then he was paid, his first year was paid $1,000? Oh, first 18 years he made. That was salary. Jerry, look at this. You know who led up there? So you see it. Editorial about. It says at the bottom of right here, to be or not to be, which is 
to be part of the military or not to be part of the National Guard? Is that, is that what he's pondering there? Lieutenant Governor and Major Barry, oh, one or the other. <laughs> That's great. Well, let me, I want to sort of probe a little bit more with you, Sarah Jane. What, what did Oklahomans like about your dad so much that they continued to vote for him you know, in the office? I mean, five different elections, and he won pretty handily, as I understand, most, most elections. What, what was his appeal? Why did people keep voting for him? I don't really know. He was, um, you know, he enjoyed shaking hands with all the people. And he went, went to a lot of bean dinners. Yeah. Uh, I'd read somewhere that he, he loved parades and participated oh. in a lot of parades, made a lot of social events and community events you know, around the state. Every parade in Stillwater, he led on his horse. Mm -hmm. Had, you know, somebody let him borrow a horse. And he was a good looking, mm -hmm. wore his uniform. And set up there just ramrod straight mm -hmm. with boots. <laughs> they, they brought me a picture this uh, last time Melinda was down, mm -hmm. and it, he's a good looking. So I'm trying to have this picture in mind. So he's ramrod straight riding into town on a horse and then shows up at the banquet or I mean the parade and, and he's riding and those horses, these polished boots and he must have been quite a figure. He really was. Mm -hmm. But he, um, they went, you know, went out at night a lot mm -hmm. to different t towns. Did, did your mother go with him a lot on those activities? Oh, yeah. So the, the older brothers and sisters kind of took care of the younger kids then? Well, that first year, of 34, when he ran, they sent me up to Cleveland to stay with Cousin Mildred. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No, but... Um, I knew Melbourne. I, uh, the thing I remember that, about that was I fell in the cactus plant. <laughs> <laughs> and she spent most of the time picking uh, needles out of my room. Ask her if she stayed with Bessie. Posterior, huh? <laughs> Never stayed with Bessie. Never stayed with Bessie. Just that one time with Mildred. What, uh, do you, do you recall what, a little bit about your father's political philosophy. What were his core political beliefs? Did, did, did you ever talk politics with your dad? I mean, or he was, with he your was, mom? He was a, they were both Democrats, mm -hmm. no doubt about that. And thought Roosevelt was doing, a, doing things right. Mm -hmm. But he just really enjoyed going to the inaugurations mm -hmm. with, you know, they had been trained. Mm -hmm load of people and he'd visit with all, with all of them. When Ed Phillips was governor, they didn't get along for some reason. And uh, Dad was, I guess Phillips asked Dad to represent the state, but he wouldn't give him any of the tickets mm -hmm. to get in. Mm -hmm. So Dad and Mom got up to Washington or where, and uh, had to get, the, he scurried around to all the congressmen from Oklahoma, and and they got it. They finally secured the tickets, so they could go to the events, mm -hmm. like a presidential inaugurals or things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And the, you know the party beforehand, mm -hmm. all the social activities. Hey. And, let's see. <clears throat> One uh, oh, and the, he'd ride in in the parade after the inaugural, and uh, one, one year they had given him a box lunch or something, and he had, had picked up a sack of oranges someplace. So as he ride along, he'd, he'd pitch an orange out the window to the policemen who were having to stand there and, in the cold, or this the crowd, but they all cheered. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, as you got a little bit older, did you participate in some of his political campaigns? Not, I didn't go out and make speeches. Like in 40, maybe 48, somewhere along in there when you'd been out of college at that time? 
48. I don't remember what I was doing at 48. But I didn't, I didn't, you know, sorry I didn't. Mm -hmm. But and you never, never went out and heard him speak on the stove well, or anything? I was working in the city. At 48, I was. Mm -hmm. Worked, in, you know, had a job in the city. Mm -hmm. But um, he, he had very strict ideas about what a girl should do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do, uh, go to business school at a and m and he, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. When I graduated, I, I wanted to mm -hmm. um, work as a secretary someplace. Mm -hmm. No, you go to work for DHS, that's, and I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. Mm -hmm. Mom and I played that year. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, would you, could you describe your, your father's campaign strategy? I mean, did, did he have a campaign manager? Just that first, the first time he ran, mm -hmm. he had two or three. I guess they didn't stay long. But after that, it was mama. Your, most your, of it. your mother was, was his unofficial campaign manager. She, she managed the, the state, uh, his campaign from Oklahoma City and then the yeah. headquarters, campaign headquarters. Hmm. And then after the, Third time, I think they didn't have to. They didn't have the campaign down the city. He just do it mm -hmm. from the bank. Did he after after you know two or three terms? Did he did he have an opponent from the uh, from the uh, uh, Democratic Party side? Oh yes. Still did every year. Mm -hmm. Did 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 your father enjoy campaigning? Oh, he loved it. Mm -hmm. He was just. He liked to get out and, and meet people. Did, can you, you mentioned a little bit about he and uh, Governor Phillips to get along and uh, help me here, but I think the governors he's served under is Marlin, Phillips, Kerr, Turner, and Johnston Murray. Did he ever talk about, I mean, any stories he, that he told about the governors that he worked with? No, he, he didn't say much about them. Now, a politician who was never ran for office, but was a pretty good politician, was Henry G. Bennett. Oh, did, yes. did he have a close relationship with Dr. Yes. Bennett? In fact, one time he was thinking about running for governor, and he kept waiting for Bennett to make up his mind. He was thinking about it too, mm -hmm. and Dad said I wouldn't run if if Dr. Bennett mm -hmm. did. But neither one of them ran. Did did your father ever you know, want to be governor? I mean, I know he was acting or interim governor sometimes in his career, but did he ever want to run for the governorship? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. But he just never did. I guess Mama kept him from it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, other than your mother, were there other reasons you think that he didn't run? He seemed like he would have had a pretty good support base after you know, two or three terms as lieutenant governor. Well, he ran for the United States Senate. Once and got clobbered. Oh, really? So. Who, who did he run against? Um. Mm, I can't remember. No. no that's okay. No, a, I didn't, a, a, didn't remember. A good one. <laughs> but, but he, so he, he didn't do very well. No. Maybe it would have been someone like Monroney or someone like that, maybe. Oh, he wouldn't have run against me. But someone of that caliber. Mm -hmm. Did, did you ever visit your father at his office in Oklahoma City? I mean, do you have any memories of uh, the Capitol in his office? Yes. Um, now the Lieutenant Governor has a big fancy office. Mm -hmm. When he went in, he was just given a regular Senator's office. Mm -hmm. Just you know, one, one room, one, one desk, and mm -hmm. I guess two desks. But he wanted a little privacy, so he paid to have uh, the front room partitioned off mm -hmm. so he could have a private office. Mm -hmm. And I would, I'd go down and well, when he was campaigning, there was a, a newsboy selling papers out in front of the mm -hmm. Biltmore Hotel. His name was Louie. 
And when Dad would come up, he'd wave his paper and say, Vote for James E. Berry. <laughs> or put his, I think he had a, a sticker on his, his hat. But he, he and Dad got pretty well acquainted. And he hired Louie to be his personal page. Three dollars a day. <coughs> Louie was making two fifty a week selling papers. So he was tickled to death. <laughs> he was trying to support his mother, who mm. father had died. And uh, so Louie stayed with him quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I'd go down and, and uh, walk, you know, fool around the Capitol and see what was going on. Did he ever walk you around? Did he ever take you to the floor of the Senate with him? No. Yeah. Although your mother was there now, as you described earlier. I probably went with her some, mm. some, but I thought it was boring at that time. <laughs> you, your father, we talked about him being five-term lieutenant governor. What did he enjoy most about being lieutenant governor? Do you know? Oh, just having uh, people recognize him. Mm. It sure wasn't the money. Mm. Mm. What? What do you think motivated him to serve all those 20 years? Because I mean, he had a full-time job as president of a bank and a family and, and then lieutenant governor. Well, what was his motivation? I guess it was just the, to be lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. The uh, prestige that went with it. Mm -hmm. He had a sense of of service and we wanted to serve the people of the state. Uh, oh yes. Mm. What would, uh, how would you describe your father's political legacy? What do you, what do you think would be his legacy? Good dem Democrat and uh, he th thought the Republicans were too hard on people, mm. didn't, you know, wouldn't help the the small business person or the farmer. Would you describe him as a pretty progressive uh, Democrat? Yes. Kind of an FDR mold? I would. He raised, his, his hobby was raising bees. He had a lot of hives down at 802 Duck and then out on the farm. And he was always trying to get the Department of Transportation to tell him to quit cutting the clover on the side of the road. So this pretty clover comes up and just as it gets ready to bloom, they cut it down. <laughs> and the bees can't get any, any food. He was a farmer, um, very interested in his, in his <coughs> farm, and talked to the A&M people mm -hmm. to, about different practices that would be good. He always, and he clerked all the same farm sales. Mm -hmm. He liked to do that. Sarah Jane, we were talking about the accomplishments of your, your father, but from your perspective, what were his significant contributions at, you know, politically? Well, Jerry, I can't thank this right offhand. But I will tell you this story that Be Beverly mentioned. Um, when I was been out of school a year, mm -hmm. I met Jim Rogers from Oldenville or I met him in college, while I was still in college. And uh, that summer he was campaigning for Dewey, for president, mm -hmm. Thomas C. Dewey. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, his, his dad was a Republican, and they were paying Jim $100 a day, two days on the weekend, to go out and campaign. And in 1948, that was doggone good money. And he was in school and still in in law school and needed it. So he was campaigning for Dewey. And he would come up to Stillwater driving his campaign car with 
red Dewey signs on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, Jim, you can't park that out in front of our house. Oh, it's all right. And Frank, Frank said he wanted to run out with a shotgun and chase him off, but he was afraid the neighbors would get the wrong idea. <laughs> oh, mercy. Good story. Uh, after we got married, he saw the light and became a Democrat. There you go. What, um, come a couple uh, last question about your dad. What do you, how do you hope people will remember your dad and his legacy, his contribution? How do you, how do you think people will remember him? How do you hope people will remember him? As a good banker and as a congenial lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's pick back up on, on your personal life, sir, Jenny. We, we kind of left you at OSU in our previous interview here. Uh, so what? So you said you met uh, Jim Rogers, your your, your your husband that you married later, at at OSU. Did you what? What did you do after you left OSU? Well, I just had one year mm -hmm. that uh, I, uh, Mom and I just. Mm -hmm ran around, went to New York a couple of times, and just had a, had a, a fun time. So this, instead of your tour of Europe, this was your tour that you had with your mother. Huh? Now this, was this the summer that your dad wanted you to work for DHS? And, is that uh, right? Probably. You come out earlier that you said he, that you wanted to, to do, do business work, with yeah. professional secretary work, and et cetera, and he, he didn't think that was appropriate. No. And after I married Jim, he didn't want me to work in Jim's office. But he needed a secretary, you know, and um, I thought that'd be great, but Dad did not approve. Well, let's kind of go back to the Jim's story about, about you and Jim. How, how did you meet? He had a date with a sorority sister of mine, uh, and she got sick and went home and asked me if, if I'd go out with him. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> That's a great story. Did, did she? Did you ever get any squabbles about this afterwards? <laughs> no, she didn't. They weren't romantically involved. Oh, okay. They were just both young Republicans. No, mm -hmm. oh, so you, you, you got to help me understand how you, how you ever dated this guy if he's Republican. I mean, well, I didn't. Well, I, I, <coughs> I was nice. I just. Ignored it. <laughs> well, you converted him later, right? As you said, so it worked out pretty good. What? When you left OSU, you had a degree in, in uh, English. Mm -hmm. What? What did you intend to do? I mean, did, did you ever thought about career-wise what you wanted to be? That you, you were still single, uh, out well, of school. Had no, had no plans. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to college, so I did. Were you and Jim still seeing each other that year then after you graduated? Oh yeah, he was. He finished law school uh, and uh, took the bar that, that summer. So he was in the city studying. And uh, I'm like, well, not, I was in the city working for Halliburton's that summer on the college board. Mm -hmm. you know, no pay, just. Had a good time. Lived at the YW. Oh, see, mm -hmm. And so we could see each other time or two during the week. Mm -hmm. So what what year did you get married then? And was it been forty nine? Forty nine. Forty nine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Where did where did your you and your husband's career take you from there? Holdenville. Mm -hmm. Why why was this his hometown? Yeah, this was his mm -hmm. his his. Father was an attorney, mm -hmm. so he came down and went into into practice with him. Dad wanted us to move to Stillwater, which we should have done, but <laughs> Holden Mill was a good place to raise kids. Mm -hmm. Now, did uh, did your did, did your husband Jim did he have a? Of course, it's a small town, so probably had a fairly general practice. But did he have a specialty area? No, civil and oil and, oil and gas. Mm -hmm. His dad was um, 
Indian law. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about having a family. Can you tell me a little bit about your, your, your kids? Then? Well, we have two boys and two girls. Bill was the oldest, and he uh, lives in Dallas and is a computer consultant. Bob is, was next, and he is uh, chairman of our National Bank and uh, has, was in the car business. Was he in Paul's Valley? Paul's right? Valley. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Becky retired 30 years with IBM. And she's in Georgia, built a home on a, in Reynolds Plantation, which is a golfing community. Mm -hmm. And she and Steve live there and play golf mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And she worked in a different places. Was she with Walmart at one time? Am I, no? We got Beverly. Yeah. yeah we gotta get, we got to get Beverly in there. Well, I'm just coming to Beverly. Okay. I took drink water so I could. She's the baby, right? You got just got to her. And she went to law school. She was mayor of Holden Bill for two years or four, four years. Wow, no wonder she knew everybody there at the restaurant. <laughs> and, well, that's been a long time. <laughs> she was 29 years old when she was mayor. Mm. And uh, then she went to law school and became city manager of Oak Mulgee and City Attorney of Sepulpa, Midwest City. And then I talked to her into coming back, and she had a job with the oil and gas company here. Mm -hmm. But they've sort of gone under. But she's <coughs> taking care of me mm -hmm. and my estate. Well, Sir Jane, were you ever, did you ever have an active role in the Still International Bank? I mean, as no. a, other than as, I guess you were a stockholder, maybe. Oh, yeah. But, but never had an active yeah. role on the board or anything. But now your your son is the current chairman of the board. Is that yes. that's Bob, is chairman of the board of Still International Bank. So the the tradition has continued. Yes. Through through you and into your next generation. Oh, they, um, I had seen Aunt Jenny and Aunt Dora serve on the board, mm -hmm. and they were both just agreeable to what what was going on, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do that. So. Um, that you, 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 might, you might ruffle some feathers a little bit? Oh, I just didn't think it was going to help the bank. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, back here, Beverly could have done it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bob McCormick suggested that Bob come, go on the board, mm -hmm. and he was glad to do it and has really enjoyed it and works at it. Mm -hmm. You know, you... Uh, we talked a little bit about your father, and of course, been politically active. Did you? I know you. Uh, I'd like for you to share with us some of your political experiences you had in politics. Did, but I want to ask you first of all: Did your did your interest and love of political affairs come more from your dad, or, or have a better conversation from your mom, or, or both? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. I ran for uh, city council one time, and didn't make it. Mm -hmm. You here in Holden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Talk. Mama said, well, I could have told you, you were, that your slogan was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what was your slogan? Why, why can't a qualified woman serve? Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you you're just ahead of your time, <laughs> Jane, a little bit ahead of your time. She said it should have been a qualified wo woman can serve. Where you, there, now, this was your, your mother's mm -hmm. advice? Uh, your mother was a pretty, pretty good oh, politician. She was, she was sharp. I think maybe you got more from your mom than you did from your dad on that deal. Oh. Yeah. Well, can you share, I know you were, you were active in the Democratic Party in the state, at the state level for many, many years. Could you share a little bit of your political experiences? Well, going, of course, going to the national uh, convention was was the big experience. So you are a delegate to the national convention a, a couple times, were you? A delegate twice and an alternate once. Okay. Um, Jimmy Carter, let's see, and, and um, it was there when Jimmy Carter beat Ted Kennedy, mm -hmm. and then um, 60, no, 70, 72, 
Beverly, who was it in 72? Who's that? 72, oh, hmm. Eagleton, who was the... Candidate? I should have looked this up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, um, who was there the year you went? That was, good. That was Carter. Carter. Mm -hmm. uh, were, were, you back, Carter. were you back in Carter all the way I mean, in the early part of the campaign? No, you stayed independent up until the very end. That way, oh, yeah, there was people were wooing you for your, board, your votes. Yeah. Did you get some, some votes? McGovern was, McGovern was running that year, and I said I would not, I would not support McGovern in the primary, mm -hmm. but if he were the nominee, I would. Mm -hmm. But, um, and it was, it was just exciting to meet all these mm -hmm. politicians. Here's, here's some of the oh, famous please. people you met, you got to shake hands with and got to meet. Tom Brokaw. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the guard dog. Uh, Hubert Humphrey, Lloyd Benson. And she was a page mm -hmm. and had red, white, and blue hat mm -hmm. outfit. She could run all over the Madison Square Gardens, get in anywhere. Can you share some sort of inside stories? You know, you, you watch things on TV and you get certain images of what, what's it really like to be a you know, you're an uncommitted delegate, so you got people who in you. Can, what, what's the experience like? Can you share a little bit of that? Tell you what, the best thing about the convention was sitting behind George and I, just sitting just right, right by him, and uh, listen to him talk to people. That man's a whiz. He can talk. He's, he's smart. Maybe the second best lieutenant governor ever that's had right. state, right? That's, that's right. <laughs> I should be glad he didn't run again. But, um, of course, there's much noise. Mm -hmm. You really can't hear what's going on on the podium. Yeah. You, ever, you ever get in you know, so, the, the so-called smoke-filled rooms and we're making deals? I no. mean, can, didn't, didn't you get in any of that? No. They, those are the big dogs. And then I was in the National Federation of Democratic Women and was vice president. National vice president then? Of, had 13 states. Wow. I was responsible, I traveled over. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was interesting to meet the people in the different states mm -hmm. and go fly up to their conventions. Bill was a uh, flight attendant for American and so he, he could get me free, free, free tickets. Oh. Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you had to stand in line, but you, but I could. So I made a lot of the conventions. Did you ever serve uh, at the statewide level uh, or local level uh, in terms of on the Democratic Party? Uh, in terms of in what? their committee, you know, the Democratic, the, the state Democratic Party committee. Did you serve at yeah. that level as well? Yes, I was. On the on the committee, mm -hmm. representing the third district, mm -hmm. co-chair. Co-chair of the third district. Yeah. I was chairman. Jim. I was co-chair, and then I was chairman. That's right. Sorry. Okay. So there, there's the old the old third district yeah. here in the state southeast. southeast, little little Dixie district. Mm -hmm. And did you get to know? Uh, I guess what uh, Carl Albert. Uh, oh yeah, I do. Um, Jim was on the American Legion National Committees, mm -hmm. and he'd go to Washington every year, mm -hmm. so I'd go up with him. I go see Carl, mm -hmm. and he got me into one of the Watergate hearings of mm -hmm. the courthouse. You didn't know that? Okay. Well, was, did that you hear was, some good stuff at that one? <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> But um, Carl was really nice to me. He and Jean Stipe. Jean was a good fellow. Mm -hmm. And when we were going down the 3rd District, he'd say, now, if you run into any trouble, you call, and I'll take care of it. 
<laughs> this, um, in the third district, yeah, that's right. important. I'll send somebody out to take care of him, right? What did, did you work with, Wes Watkins also at that time? Yes. What do you remember about Wes? Any favorite Wes Watkins stories? Well, I worked with Wes and Lou both mm -hmm. and thought they were great. Mm -hmm. And they'd tell me, uh, make these speeches about how wonderful the Democratic Party is, how we've got to get out and defeat these Republicans. And I just sat there and took it all in. Mm -hmm. And then they turned out they are one. Well, uh, and I've never forgiven them. Are there other other facets, uh, Sarah Jane, of your life you to share with us that we haven't talked about? We're talking about kind of the bank involvement. We're talking about a little bit your family life, uh, about some of your things you did politically, or the, some things we missed, or some other organizations you've been part of. And you'd like to share with us? Oh, the first fifteen years I was here, I was active in every organization they had. Mm -hmm. And then finally <laughs> was was on the library board with Veldo. That was interesting. We built a new audition. The Grace Pickens. <laughs> Grace Pickens. Mm -hmm. Guess who gave us but he didn't give us mm -hmm. I think twenty thousand. I thought, yeah. boy, we were cheap. Well, Brewer was a pretty good fundraiser, wasn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a nice fellow. Pink ladies, mm -hmm. you're acting in that. Mm -hmm. American Legion Auxiliary. Mm -hmm. Well, Sarah Jane, we've got to talk about uh, this, this uh, family divided. Uh, well, I know you, you come from a strong OSU background and you've got a couple of your kids are away. I mean, we've got to. Now, well, Jim went to OU. That's, that's what I was going to say. I thought there was someone else in the family that, that slipped away from yeah. OSU. And uh, Bill insisted on going. He went to Air Force Academy for one year, two years, and then came back to OU. But I couldn't talk him out of it. So Jim and Bill both? Yeah. Okay. And then Becky Beverly went to OSU. Bob went to East Central. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Jim was prisoner of war during the Second World War in, in Germany for a year. And he came back and devoted his life to the Legion, taking care of helping people. But he really was um, sincere about wanting to help anyone he could. So he went to all the Legion meetings and that was on the national national committees, mm -hmm. and we've all. Well, of course, Dad was legionnaire too. Always has. See a picture. Always has his legion pin on. Sergeant, I want to get back to some of your. I think we sort of missed a little bit of the the the, uh, the heavy lifting that you did in the political arena. Could you kind of share? I know you you worked with campaigns with a lot of the. Uh, the uh, politicians for state offices and, and in this third district when you were chairman and co-chairman of the third district. Could you describe what a campaign year was like I and mean, how you organized it, uh, trips you made, appearances? How, how, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, the bus tours was, was the, uh, the big deal of the campaign year and that was sponsored by the Federation Women, women. and we had to raise the money to rent a bus and then be sure that we had campaign material delivered to the bus and all of them, uh, a woman or one or two representing each candidate. So we went out for David Hall's campaign. Joe, Joe Hall was on it. And uh, George Nye was running for lieutenant governor. So Donna was on and with Shirley Castle probably. But, and then um, we had someone re for each office, and we had, had a schedule. We'd go to the, go down here for 10 o'clock, have coffee with women in this town, and uh, the men, men and women. Mm -hmm. And then we'd hurry over here for noon, have lunch, have it set up, and uh, go all through the through the week like that. 
but it was good. It was fun to, to get to know these the candidates. Yeah. Of course, there'd be Joe Hall wouldn't be the only one on. There'd be a, uh, somebody on for um, Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. Either Carl or Wes. And I guess you'd get to know a lot of the local, you know, the Chamber of yes. Commerce people, the, the mayors, the city councilmen, and the leaders of the different communities. So this is sort of a whistle, -top, a whistle stop tour, you'd think. You'd go in and do uh, work, walk the town and hand out leaflets and do a parade and jump on the bus and go to the next one. Did, were you sometimes, did, did you do the prep work or did some of the candidates come in behind you or were you coming in usually in front of them or? We were, um, they probably were someplace else mm -hmm. working. Okay. So we just had our group. And so what, uh, how long would this go on like you, you just said a week, two, or get two, three days off and come back and hit another no, tour? Just, you, uh, you get the whole district in one week? Yeah. Wow. And um, then we, would have bean dinners at different places after after the tour, before the camp, before before the election. Well, can you tell me about what it took to set up this kind of? I mean, I just think the logistics had to be staggering. Just all the contacts, the phone calls, the meetings. The could you, could you share a little bit of how you organized that? Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was a lot of work, mm -hmm. but. We thought it was worth it because we got to get our message out. All the letters you sent out and the telephone calls you made. Just you were the member. Volunteer see, time we, we, was very expensive on family. So you didn't have didn't have fax, didn't have cell phones, didn't have mm -hmm. this is pressing the flesh just yeah. the old fashioned way, wasn't it? Are were are those good memories for you? Type of those letters. Well, did that, your experience come in handy from still an action bank typing for your dad? Yeah, I, could, I was a good typist at that time. Mm -hmm. some, uh, there's some special friendships that you made that you remember? Could you kind of share some of those with us? Edna May Phelps over at Salmon Hole. Mm -hmm. She was a sharp lady, wasn't she? Yeah, a sharp lady. And Obera and Lorraine. Lorraine Dyson, Guthrie, mm -hmm. Obera, Fergadol from Enid. Oh, there were a lot of, but they were, that was the core mm -hmm. of my, my friends. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have our Democratic conventions mm -hmm. and- uh, A statewide convention. Mm -hmm. In the city or someplace. You'd have to go down two days before and have a hospitality room, mm -hmm. and Cokes and, and uh, chips. No drinking. Yeah, no, no, nothing behind the, the no. curtain. <laughs> okay. But um, it was expensive running for national delegate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Had to entertain all the people. Well, what, what, when you were in, 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 in you told me in D.C., you were there? When you, when you run for, for national office? What, national what, delegate to convention. Mm -hmm. What, what was that like? You said you, you provided refreshments and entertainment. Well, I was in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma City? Yeah, mm -hmm. or, or sometimes in Ada. But you had to have a hospitality room mm -hmm. and people come in and try to get a vote for you for delegate. Well, can, you, can you tell me a little bit? How, how did, what did you have to do to become a delegate? I mean, first of all, you, you did all the legwork and all the years in the district. I mean, but yeah, so but what, get, what was, how did you, quote, campaign for and run for national delegate? Make signs and uh, tell people you want to go, mm -hmm. and so why, why they ought to vote for you. And this was a vote at the, would it be the state convention, is that how you were right. elected? Or? Well, and the district could elect so many. Okay. So if you didn't get it in the district, you had to go on to the state and try, so try that, to get elected up there. And kind of say that large word, yeah. or didn't know these are congressional districts, you know, within your congressional district. Okay. Were you were you elected from the district, or were you at large? Your your from the district. District. Okay. I think I can understand why after you described your tour and all the work you did. You there, you're probably pretty popular with the candidates. <laughs> and I well, and every county had, you know, their own county officials, mm -hmm. so you had to get to know them, mm -hmm. and that was a uh, big help. How many counties did you have? Twenty-two. I think I was twenty-two. Wow. The Payne, three officials Payne each, County in each one, so there was, was in at that at one time. 
You, you had to love politics. Oh yeah. You did that. <laughs> you know, nuts. Mm. Well, what, what were your, you know, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the adrenaline rush? Maybe what was what kept bringing you back? What what made you work so hard and so passionately? Well, for like you know, my friends, Edna May and Lorraine were doing it too. Mm -hmm. In fact, they were did more than I did, but. And it just got to be exciting. Did you feel strongly that you were making a difference by, by helping get good candidates elected and getting good and, people in office? And I enjoyed meeting the candidates, knowing the candidates. Mm -hmm. You know, it got so I could go to the Capitol and know an awful lot of people up there. When you, when you used your name, they'd return the call. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just fun to be recognized by people that are doing good work up there. And I had a... you want to tell the story about uh, the state convention Bob Funston was cheering and moment of silence? Uh, Dad ran and he was elected in 54. He ran again in 58. Who was this now? My father. Oh, okay. No, 50. It was his last term, wasn't it? 55 was last year's service. 54 was his last year, 55. 51 would have been the last election. He ran again. He, he ran 54 and was defeated. And was um, the year I was born. Who, who did he run against, by the way? Cowboy Pink Williams. Pink Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> he was ahead in the, in the primary. Pink got in the runoff, mm -hmm. and the one in the runoff always has a better chance. Mm -hmm. Was it a close election? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, oh, we were crushed, and Dad was upset. He was really upset. Mm -hmm. And Mama was quoted in the Tulsa paper saying, well, tell you one thing, I've got some dresses for sale cheap. I've got two pink dresses, and I'm never going to wear them again. Tell about Thompson. And uh, so we had this convention, state convention a couple of years ago. I guess it was after. Had been the 70s or so. Yeah. And um, Bob Thompson was chairman. And he was a good friend, but he was always getting his, sticking his foot into something and, and getting jumped on. So he thought, boy, this time I'm going to be really good. And he got up there and he said, now let's, uh, sorry to t tell you that Cowboy Pink has died, and now we're going to have a few moments of silence. And I went up to him later and I said, you son of a gun. <laughs> what do you mean having silence for Cowboy Pink? He said, well, I didn't think he'd bite mine then. I said, I did. <laughs> so he defeated my dad. He thought that was one thing he could do that wasn't going to be controversial, and it was. He knew I wasn't serious. Yeah, I know. Looking back on all that, I mean, you you, you made a lot of friends and and, 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 and influenced a lot of people. Uh, how do you how do you want to be remembered? How do you how do you think people you want to remember Sarah Jane Rogers? Golly, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, remember me for my four ki good kids. You're very modest. And, uh, well, I've got some other things. Surely you and people remember you for. I have no idea. Besides being a yellow dog Democrat. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, you stick up for the small person. Yeah. You fight for their rights. And of a friend to a friend to all. Sir Jane, we really appreciate you taking the time to visit with us and it's been great to learn more about you and your, your parents and, and your mother. We found a lot of things you didn't know about it, Edwina. Uh, I love the story about the two dresses. The two dresses. That's a great great. story. Yeah. But is there anything else that, would, that we've left out that you want to share with us or talk no, about? No, I can't think of anything. I think we've covered a lot. <laughs>